guys, I'm Laria Petrucci. And I'm David Foster. Farm to food. For a farm, farm to, to fork. fork. Yes. <laughs> I'm learning along with you guys about the small steps that we can take uh, to put organic food back into our systems, back into our refrigerators, all that good stuff. Yeah, when I lived up north in Indiana, uh, I lived in Amish country, so I could go drive around in the country and find little booths that had corn and vegetables and fruit and get it for like, I mean, I'd get ears of corn for like 25 cents. Um, and I just loved eating that way. Yeah. And then when I moved away, you know, get it. and a lot of people don't realize you can find this in most cities or towns they'll have some sort of market where you can get fresh produce fresh eggs stuff like that this was really eye-opening to me because we are in the middle of frisco which is a suburb of dallas and the city is here yet we're gonna about to go check out some farm fresh food which is really cool mm -hmm. so shall we go in yeah i, I can smell it i wish we had smell-o-vision look it's, it's in like a hundred year old house this is awesome <laughs> okay, so in here you see uh, right off the, the, the right inside is organic fresh food um, that's sourced locally from uh, farmers around the DFW area. Well, and what's ironic too is like usually these are full, but the, there's been a lot of rain in Dallas lately and it actually has affected the crops. So where they are, it's actually hurting them. You would think that rain would help. But there's so much rain that it's actually washing the seeds away. So that's why the bins are a little bit empty today. But you can see, I mean, when I go to the grocery store, I actually get very disappointed by squash the most. Uh, but this looks like a gorgeous piece of squash that I want to take home and cook. <laughs> so I love seeing all the fresh food for sure. Uh, oh, you want to go over there? Yes. There's so much to look at. There's uh, grass-fed beef, which I don't know if, if you've never had grass-fed beef, if you're just getting it from the regular grocery store, I highly recommend you at least try it because it's a completely different experience. Oh, this looks like, oh, it is, it's bratwurst. Apple bratwurst. I think we're going to be Ooh, buying that. that looks delicious. Before we leave. Look, there's pasta over here. Uh-oh, Italian. <laughs> Fresh, homemade pasta, not my pasta, but you can see all of the ingredients. You can see exactly, I mean, it looks even slightly different than the pasta that you buy at the store. What'd well, you get like, over there? I found marinated artichokes, Ooh. right? So on the ingredient list, you'll notice there's artichoke hearts, vinegar, sweet peppers, jalapeno peppers, onions, garlic, extra virgin olive oil, Wait, spices, and this. I can pronounce all that stuff. Yeah, well, and that's the thing. Like, the smaller the ingredient list, the better it is for you. In most cases, unless it just says the ingredient is crap. Now, you know? some, thi <laughs> <laughs> some things have to have, like, preservatives and stuff right. in it. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the thing I've learned is... If you don't understand what something is in that ingredients list, yeah. So like, Google if you can't, it. yeah, if you can't pronounce it, Google it because chances are, if you can't pronounce it, it's probably not that good for you. Probably not the greatest. So, uh, but over there, I saw some more fresh food. Uh, actually, let me show you these. This is really cool. So you can see, these are all different um, people. You know, local local sources. This particular one, pesticide free. Was so you've got lettuce two days ago, and um, still this still root. has the roots on it. So it is, it is living. It's still, uh, you know, fresh. So they said actually, this stuff, they know exactly when it was picked. You know, when it was uh, taken off of the farm, and how long it's been here. I actually was watching her earlier, and she was checking the produce and and taking away things that didn't look good. Right. Anymore. So so in some instances, when you're at a regular grocery store. Things can sit on the shelf for a long time because they have so many preservatives, but this, you have to get it in and get it out because it actually will start to decay uh, being here. Yeah. So, and that's why they leave the roots on too, so that, that does help keep it preserved a little bit longer. They actually started this entire business with their honey. Uh, so she had bees and she started making honey. Look at this one. It has cinnamon in it mm, and lavender over there. So I want to try the lavender honey. I bet you do. You I love do. lavender. Uh, we've got fresh eggs. Uh, we've got kale, lemon, ginger, cucumber, chard, and parsley. What is that? That's water. Oh, it's Organic water. Organic juices and smoothies. Nice. Okay, what else do we have? Uh, ooh, there's soap over yeah, here. Yeah, no, I love check soap. Check out the soap. So, a lot of times you like with uh, propylene glycol and stuff that's in what? soap. Propylene glycol. That's what I'm saying. You can't <laughs> pronounce it. It's probably not good. 
but we on a daily basis we put that on our skin we put it in our hair and that actually is like it's 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 not good <laughs> i mean would you go so far as, as the, it saying like it's poisonous to our system eh, not poisonous but it's yeah i mean that's it's not good but like using you know organic soaps that oh. are chemical free and the thing is like smell that mm, you can actually smell wow. the oat, oats yeah. in it because that's got must have oatmeal in it so it's better for your skin better for your body um to to put that natural stuff on it well any kind of product shampoo and right. all that stuff it's just you, you want to try to remain as chemical free as possible now when i think of bad stuff that we put in our system i think of coffee uh, we drink a lot of coffee around the office. Or as fuel, <laughs> as some people call it. Right. Uh, but here they actually have a cafe, and it's all organic coffee and sweeteners and, and all sorts of stuff. And I was looking at the price. Uh, it's actually cheaper than Starbucks. Mm -hmm. And you're getting organic coffee. Uh, I had one earlier that had... Um, agave. Agave, organic agave, and uh, uh, cashew milk, which mm, was, was freaking phenomenal. That was delicious. And then, as we were walking through here, I noticed they have bacon and cheddar brownies. <laughs> OMG! Bacon and cheddar. Not my, no, don't even worry about the chocolate and all that stuff. Bacon <laughs> and cheddar. How can and you it's all organic. So, I mean, the, the thing that I've, I've learned through this process of small steps that we can take is you can still have your coffee. Uh, and you can still make it sweet because I don't like coffee for coffee's sake. I have to sweeten it up with something. And typically I'll do like a caramel macchiato at Starbucks, but that stuff, I mean, the amount of crap in there is got to be huge. Yeah. Uh, so I'm learning the, the type of sweeteners that I can use to sweeten my coffee and still make it delicious and enjoyable, mm -hmm. which is pretty cool. Um, so I actually, actually like the taste of coffee. <laughs> Here they make... Um, they have classes as well. I'm running into the stools. They have classes that you can take to help uh, you learn more about this stuff and make your own, uh, for instance, um, what did I say? Butter. They're going to have a butter making uh, class, candle making class. So, David, I actually signed us up for that. Nice. So we'll, I've always uh, wanted to know how to make butter. Share some of actually, that Actually, my later. grandmother collects antiques, right? So she has one of the old butter churns. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so I always thought that was pretty cool. I wonder if that's what they do. Maybe. We'll have do. to check it out. So you guys take, you know, learn how you can take your small steps within your own life. What is it that uh, you use the most? What is it that you eat the most? And start with those. Yeah, like so for instance, if you eat a lot of eggs or you drink a lot of dairy, you know, look for a place like this in your local community and just start with that one thing. It might be, you know, at first it might be a little more expensive, but if you think long term, you know, about the, the potential medical bills that you're saving yourself from later from eating all this crap and preservatives that we put in our body, it's, it's beneficial. And you know what? I have a challenge for you. If you think this is a bogus or it's not worth the extra money or anything like that, take what month two months just commit yourself to two months of living that lifestyle or just switching out you know a couple of items in your daily routine and see how you feel at the end of the two months and then make your decision mm -hmm. and you make sure you like pay attention to the flavor because like one thing like eating something that is uh, more like that comes from a local mm -hmm. farmer or something you you actually like in the vegetables you taste a little dirt you're tasting mm -hmm. the uh, the minerals and it's a it's a way Not better in a bad way no it's it's, it's more fresh. flavorful yeah so like if you eat lettuce from the grocery store it hardly has any flavor right but if you eat it from uh, or a like farm. a local farm that's not full of chemicals you can actually taste have flavor in it so same with the awesome. beef same with everything so. Let us know what small steps you're taking down in the comments below. We look forward to more. If you have questions or want to see more of one thing or another, let us know. Yep. He's David. She's Luria. <laughs> Bye.